In this example, we will use the loop workflow step to move through a list of customer records from a smart object data source and perform tasks on each of the customer records in the list. There are various ways to work with a reference list in the loop step, but in this demonstration, I'm going to work with a dynamic reference I created that points to a list of records in a Denalix customer's database table stored in a SQL Server instance. It just calls the getList method for now and pulls back all customer records from that table of which I can use throughout this workflow. Make a note, for performance reasons, you may want to consider using filtering in your create reference step, depending on the number of records and workflow steps you plan to work with in the loop. I'll drop the loop step in right after this create reference step by pulling it over from the logic group in the left side toolbox. From here, I'm going to select the Denalix customers reference for the designated list. As we work with this list, we obviously will need some way to reference the current list item during each iteration of the loop. Under Options, the list item reference is a pointer that can be used to reference the current list item that the looping step is sitting on within each iteration. We'll see how that works here in a few seconds. Now I'll drop a send email step on the canvas and connect it to the next item path that comes out of the loop step. For the subject line of this message, I'm just going to add some text stating to please review the linked terms of service agreement for Denalix. For the body of the message, I'll add in some generic text that is similar but also contains a salutation. At this point, because this is a message that is meant to be customized and sent to each customer in the list, I need to get access to the name of the current customer the loop is processing. I can find this in the context browser on the fields tab. Remember, I had the list item reference called Denalix customer list item configured up in the loop step to point to the current list item as the loop iterates. I'll open that reference and pull the first name field over and drop it in line with the salutation. Then I want to update the to line with the current customer's email address rather than the originator. I'll click on the edit button for the to line, delete the originators field, and drag over the customer's list item email field. Note, you can access all fields for this current list item within the looping structure this way, and it will be available to other steps that follow in the next item path. I'll also go up to the policy documents reference and just pull in a URL link to the document that starts this workflow. Great, that's all I want to do with this email step. The next thing I'll do is update each customer record with a smart object save method call to mark a field indicating that the terms of service document has been sent to the customer. I'll grab the smart object for my Denalix customers list from the smart objects group of options in the left side toolbox under K2 Learning and drop it in just after the send email step. Let's also connect it to the email step, then configure it. For the method, I'll select save from the dropdown list. Next, for input mappings properties, I know that I need to pass in the ID value for the current customer record the looping path is sitting on for an iteration. I also want to update the field called TOS sent which is just a yes, no field to toggle the fact that a customer has received the terms of service document. Again, from the context browser, I can get those fields from the Denalix customers list item reference. So first I'll click on the plus icon for input mappings and select ID. And I'll also scroll down to select the TOS sent field. Next, I'll drag over the ID reference field under the Denalix customer's list item reference. Then enter yes for the TOS service field input. From here, I'm going to connect this step back up to the loop step, which will complete our loop and basically tell K2 this is the last step to process for each looping iteration. When the last record is processed in this loop, it will then follow the complete path out and carry on with the rest of the workflow. In this example, I just skipped ahead and dropped another send email step in, 
but you can build this out further as your requirements dictate. You can also add user tasks, split steps, and other steps into the next item path as needed.